everybody, Cutthroat Cure here from the Advanced Maneuvers team, bringing to you another Cutting Corners tutorial. So, today, in today's tutorial, I actually wanted to go over a little bit of um, some basing tricks that can kind of help you out. Um, I know that Pokey had just done a video on the different types of basing that you can do uh, when coming into the hobby and some of the different styles that you can kind of play around with. And I personally wanted to go over one of my own uh, favorite styles that I use and a little bit of the interesting tricks that I've learned that kind of give me the, uh, the effect that I like when I like to put my models together or, you know, when I'm doing the basing. So this video is going to be completely about that. I'm going to go over the main points of what you're going to need to do bases kind of like mine. Um, some of the interesting things that I've learned, like little tricks that I've kind of picked up in my hobby time. And I'm also going to go over and show you exactly, um, at least for the main point, how I go about building my bases. So getting right into this, let's go over some of the items that we're going to need. So first and foremost, you're going to actually need a base. Um, right here I have just an older Privateer Press um, 50, mil, uh, 50 millimeter base that uh, has a little bit of damage from an older model that I peeled off it. But for today's tutorial, I think it's going to work perfect. Um, I did attach it to a pill bottle. Um, this is one of my favorite um, tools of the hobby to use. Um, of course, it's filled with some sand. So I used blue tack to attach that to the bottle. And that is going to be the main focus of today's tutorial. So what are some of the other items we need? Well, um, one of the main things um, that we're going to be going over here is um, the use of bark chips. Now, a lot of people like to use cork, and for many, many years, if you look at some of my earlier work, uh, cork was a mainstay of anything I use. And in no way do I think that cork is not a fantastic item and to use or tool. And in a lot of my bases, even currently, I will use pieces of cork to try and offset some of the some of the bark chips that I use um, in order to add maybe a little bit of height. Uh, but one of the things with the cork that really kind of um, makes it a little bit harder for me to use is that since I'm going for more of a natural look, I am looking to, um, I don't really like the edges as much. So uh, I find that the bark chips uh, have more of a natural like rocky look. So if you'll see here, um, even naturally where it's at, it's just very like gritty and it's got a lot of natural edges. And I mean, even right here, this is just a beautiful piece. It's just really nice to use. Um, one of the issues is, is that they're not all uniform such as cork is. So I use cork a lot of times underneath the bark chips to add a little bit of height um, because I like my bases to be really high. So bark chips comes in a number of sizes um, and you actually can buy these from most landscaping places. So one of the major places that I get mo got most of mine were from Home Depot or Lowe's. So your basic hardware stores. Um, and the size that you usually get from there are what's called medium or large bark chips. And they're huge, like they're very large pieces. Um, you know, you're looking at a lot of, you know, you know, rough edges and stuff, but these are these are very large. Like in comparison to my hand, it fits into the palm such as that. So they're rather large. Um, so that's what I usually get from hardware stores. Um, something interesting I had found in the last previous months, thanks to a good friend, Joe Braun, is that he actually from Joanne Fabrics, the uh, like um, craft slash like, um, I wanna say yarn store but I, uh, fabric store, sorry, Joanne Fabrics, duh, it's in the name. Um, I found these actually tiny pieces, yeah, and he actually got me several bags of these, and um, it's from Super Moss, I'm pretty sure is the name of the company, but they're like super tiny and perfect, so I don't have to cut them down as much. Um, so the, the big pieces still work for, um, the big pieces still work for like my larger models, so with the 50 millimeter base today, we're, it'll work pretty well, so we might use a part of that. But I'm also gonna use some of the smaller pieces so that you can see um, the differences and how you can kind of use them to build up whatever you're looking for. Um, another thing that you're going to need, is, and this is really comes up to you, is you're either gonna need some super glue. Um, I have uh, some Instacure, so that's uh, good stuff. 
Um, the only reason that I don't use this as much as I use the other glue I'm about to talk about is because I find that the bark chips kind of, um, they're porous, so they absorb the glue faster. So if you're not really like on the point and you know, right on top of things, um, applying the bark chips to the actual base is a little bit easier using the super glue. Um, but when you're doing bark, uh, bark chip to another piece of bark chip, um, super glue may not be the best choice because you're going to end up using a lot more of it and it is uh, considerably more expensive. The other option of glue that I choose to use is uh, tacky glue, just the original straight out of the bottle, bottle tacky glue. I think it's like two, three dollars a bottle. Um, I get it, um, you can get it from basically any hobby store, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, Joanne Fabrics. Um, this stuff is fantastic. Uh, you can use it for a lot of things. Uh, but using this for attaching bark chips to other pieces of bark chip usually works a little bit better and it dries clear. So that's a good piece. Um, you're gonna need some of your basic tools. So, you know, of course you got your sharp X-Acto knife and you ha I just have a pair of clippers here that I use for, you know, cutting pieces, pulling pieces, just general stuff. And then the last thing I use, um, which you can actually use by itself for different types of basing, but I use it mainly as a gap filler and um, I use it as a gap filler and I use it as basically a, it's weird to say, but a smoothing, smoothing mechanism to basically um, make it seem more seamless going from one piece of bark chip to the other. But I use Vallejo Brown Earth um, Terrain Paste. Now they have a whole line of these. They have like lava paste and this brown earth one, a bunch of different colors, but this stuff is um, a lot of fun. It's uh, kind of gritty as you can kind of hear just from opening it but it's it looks like Nutella and I have I have more than once been working with it and actually thought about tasting it just because it looks just like Nutella but um, it's pretty thick it's got bits of grit into it and um, it dries within 24 hours it dries pretty quickly I've been very happy with it so um, this was something I found this year that I really enjoy and um, I use it in almost all my base. Actually, I use it in all my bases. Um, so we'll definitely use that. And the last piece, the last tool that you can get is just a butter knife. Um, and this is going to be applied for applying the paste to um, the base. And you can get these anywhere, basically. You can get them from your fiance or husband, your drawer, or this one specifically I got from a Salvation Army, I think for 25 cents and it stays at my desk and it gets used over and over again. I like the stainless steel one just because I can take it up and I can either scrape anything that's excess on it, wash it, throw it back into my hobby kit and I'm good to go. So, all right, let's get right down to it. So, so once again, here's our base and we're just gonna pull out some of the different sizing of bark chips. So one of the main things that you want to make sure that you're doing when you're picking these out, especially when you have a model that is specifically set for the basing that you're going for, is definitely A, have an idea of what you want. Like if you want to add other pieces to it, such as like um, logs or rocks or ruins or of anything else, you know, um, it's a good idea to have that stuff kind of planned out. So um, I'm going to grab this big piece right here. And it's good to have that planned out because there's nothing worse than spending, you know, a decent amount of time getting your basing put together and everything's looking, you know, hunky-dory and then your model's not going to fit on it or just because of how it's shaped. Here's a few small pieces. Just because of how it's shaped, it's not actually going to fit onto your, it's not actually going to fit onto your base well. So that, that can be an, a little bit of an issue. Um, and I've had it happen one time and I can tell you one thing that, uh, Plenty of cuss words ensued after that happened, but um, it definitely taught me an important lesson that I can hope to bestow upon you is to just make sure that when you are doing this, that you know what kind of model you're gonna be putting on here, or you make it very generic so it's plenty of space that any model can fit on here. Um, since this one is just for tutorial um, reasons, then I don't have to worry too much just because I know that um, I'll probably end up tearing pieces of this off and using it for something or an objective or, um, well, probably not objective, it's too big. I'll use it for something, but you get the point. So I'm just gonna tear some of the pieces off. And once again, as I said, bark chips are easy to tear apart. So I brought this piece down a little bit smaller. 
So as you can see already, just by putting just that piece on my base, I've already got plenty of coverage. It looks pretty darn good. I'm just gonna hold it on here so I can turn it a little bit. But like, you see how it has all the edges and like it's rough here. And I mean, the cool part is, is that the texture that's natural to the bark chips um, makes things like um, painting, like highlights or anything like that. Or if you're somebody who likes to dry brush, like this is, this is the answer for you. You can throw down some quick colors, hit it with a wash, and then dry brush away. And, if, and I mean, if that's what you're looking for, for a quick and simple method, or if you're going for something a little bit more detailed, like I might go, you know, it gives you plenty of distance for highlights and, you know, layered areas, shadows, you know, you can just go crazy. So I'm actually gonna break this piece down one more time, if I can. Mm, there we go. And just to make it a little bit smaller because I want to be able to use some of these smaller pieces that we pulled out. Um, so I'm just going to set this right like that. And it's going to give us a little bit of overhang, but for the main part, it's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to pull that back off, take a little bit of my Instacure. I'm going to set this down and I actually think this one is sealed. So let me grab my other bottle real quick. All right. And this one we're actually going to use super gold because I have that as well. So, yeah, I knew that's what happens when you grab the wrong glue. Break this real quick. All right. All right, let's try this. I'm just going to put a pretty, you know, respectful amount of glue on there. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna kind of aim it up to where I wanna go with it. I'm just gonna jam this puppy on there and just hold it down until I feel like it's done its job. Out. So I'm gonna to add to my list of tools a um, some sort of pair of pliers so that you can open your glue. So we'll just add that to the, to the list of needed items. So already with the with the kind of glue I'm using, it's gluing pretty fast. So you can already see like, we have a decent amount of this base taken up and we have plenty of edges. We've got a flat area on the top. And I mean, and you could take your X-Acto knife or you could take, you know, your clippers and just start clipping pieces off to make room for other items. So a lot of times when I'm building my bases, I will cut into it. Um, I will cut symbols or designs into it so that I can actually pull that whole piece out and take um, some of the super sculpey that I use for a lot of my ruins and insert it in there so that it adds a little bit of extra depth and um, breaks up some of the monotony of the actual just having the bark chip. So here we go, just for the hell of it, we're gonna add a little bit of more glue. We're gonna take this piece right here Pop it right on there. And I'm gonna actually turn it so that this, this cool edge right here, which if you can look, and you can't really see as well. There we go. If you see right there, it's like a little bit divoted. So I'm gonna actually point that outwards so that it adds a little bit, a little bit more fun. I'm gonna hold that down until I feel like it's properly glued on there. at that so we've already got a lot of the we've already got a lot of this looking a lot better and yeah of course you have these open areas um, there and back here and a little bit over here that you can take things um, like pokey talked about in the uh, in the previous video and you can put sand there or other little bits and bobs some skulls whatever you want um, you know, it's really up to you, but this gives you a really good basis um, for building your base. Um, so it's really good, I like it. So I'm um, just gonna put my glue away real quick because we're just gonna move along with the whole process. So I considered putting another one of these pieces on there, but I feel for the time being like this is gonna be enough. So I'm actually gonna throw these pieces away real quick. There we go. And now we're going to show you how to use some of the tools. Um, just to kind of play around with. So taking our base here, um, I think I want to make a little bit more of a step here. So if you look at this right here, I want to add a little bit more of a gradual incline there. So what I'm going to actually do is the first thing I'm going to do is take these clippers right here and I'm just going to 
cut into it. And already with just one hit like that, because of how the bark chips are, like it already creates an, uh, you know, like this layered effect because it's, it's just layers and layers and layers of the bark. So just by that one clip right there, I've already made it so it's more gradual. So, you know, I could do something like if I was doing water effects, I could do them running down here or I could do this as a step or anything. So, I mean, that was really, you know, that was actually kind of a lucky pull. So next I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and, you know, I wanna make an area for whatever model I'm putting on this um, to put some of my Super Sculpey basing. Now, once again, like I said earlier, I don't want to mess with this top flat part too much because using leaving that area open is gonna allow me to be able to use this base for more models. Um, so it just opens up a wider range of uses for this particular base. So what I am going to do is we do have a little bit of a lip here and I would cut that off usually um, but I actually kind of like it and it doesn't actually go all the way off the base. So I'm actually trying to figure out what to use this exacto knife on. So I'm actually going to go on this back piece. And I'm just going to cut into it like so. And then I'm going to go over here and cut into this. And as you can see, like, I'm not having to do a whole lot. But just by taking my exacto knife and just kind of cutting it through these layers, I was able to cut a pretty uniform area, as you can see right here. I cut a pretty uniform area, and what I'll be able to do with that is when I get um, some of my when I get some of my ruins material put together, I can just drop some glue right there, pop it in there, and then I'm done, and I'm good to go. Um, so now that we're done using some of the tools, um, I'm going to go on to another part, and I've actually decided since I was going to work with this before, we're going to. Um, do this real quick just so I can show you how it works. Um, that's a cool looking piece. Uh, there we go. Alright, so here we go. I grabbed another piece of bark chip just because I wanted to show you how the tacky glue works. So what I'm going to do with this tacky glue is I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to apply it directly um, to the model. So I'm actually going to put a little bit um, Let's put it right, so if I leave that open for the model, let's put it right here. Okay, so just a little bit. I didn't need a bunch. And this stuff's super thick, so it works real well, so you can see that right there. Close up my tacky glue. Take this piece that I've got right here, this tiny piece, and I'm just going to stick that right to it. now. Something different between this and the super glue that I was using earlier is A, um, it has like this white, this white area right here that you might need to take a napkin and clean off just to make sure that it stays um, a lot cleaner when you're, you know, working. But also you need to realize that when you're working with the tacky glue, that it does not dry near as fast as the, anywhere near as fast as the super glue. So, you know, you can kind of clean it up. And once again, as I said, it, it dries clear so it's not going to be an issue um so it'll seem like a big white mess but um in the end it'll uh you won't even notice that but it's not going to dry as fast which is the which is an issue so it's good for as i said gluing other pieces to other pieces but you're going to have to let it set or you could get a, a blow dryer like um i have over here and um you could dry it a little bit faster i'm not going to do that just because i don't want the noise to come into the camera but, um, you know, it, it gives you the basic idea of what we're doing here. So the last part for what I'm doing here is I want to use my brown earth. Why is that not working? Come on. My brown earth paste. I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I can do with that. So get this open. All right. I'm going to grab my butternut or my fake Nutella. I grab just a little bit on here. And now as you can see from the consistency of this, it is very like, it's not liquid, but it's it's definitely not like super solid. So you can like, it's the consistency of um, Nutella. Like Nutella is the best way to describe it. Now, one of the things I wanna do with this is I actually wanna seal up this, this area in between the two pieces I put here. So what I will do is I'll actually take this, uh, the, the terrain paste 
and I'm actually gonna just spread it out along them. Now, depending on how thick you put it on there and you know how you use it is gonna actually change the consistency of how it comes. Now, this stuff is really, really messy. So, you know, making sure that you have um, an area to work that um, you can kind of, you know, uh, leave it down as you need is good, you know, because it's, you know, if it sticks to stuff, it's a little bit harder to remove. But as you can see here, uh, I get my napkin and pull this a little bit off right here. One of the things that you're going to notice is that, you know, depending on the texture you want, you can kind of beat it around and uh, make it look a little bit better. But I've already closed up that gap that was right there in the middle that was separating the two pieces of bark chip. And that's good because it's gonna make it seem um, more uniform. So taking this, and I'm just gonna put this in here, and kind of, you know, go over this. Now, cool, cool thing about this terrain paste is after it dries, you can A, apply more on top of it, or B, um, after it's dried, if you're having a hard time removing stuff, you can always take a file kit and you can um, file some of the excess off. So I'm actually just adding this to parts of the regular base just to add a little bit more texture, just because I think when I get to working on the rest of the base that uh, I think that the, the added texture is going to help um, making it seem more realistic. There you go. So I'm just kind of spreading this stuff all around. And as I said, like even though it got on the edge right here of the base, I am going to easily be able to remove that um, in the filing process after it's dried. So, you know, just kind of have some fun, combine all the pieces. I'm actually putting it over the area which the tacky glue is on just because um, you know, it doesn't really matter so much and that stuff's gonna dry anyways, so. And so, it's got a creepy color as you can tell, but once you, you know, you wanna do all of this before you base. Um, and of course, once I'm, you know, you wanna do all of this before you base so that your model is, um, that your basing is all prepared for what you're gonna do with it. And so I'll throw a little bit more over here, just to add a little bit of texture. Cause as I said, it's got a gritty feel to it. And just by doing little motions like, just patting it or taking different tools and just moving it around it's going to add like layers to it which will look more natural like um, you know like uh, mud or other things like that but it um, since I like a lot of texture this is really cool for that so clean off my clean off my uh, butter knife which I'll just use this paper towel to clean off as I said, I'll, I'll go ahead and wash this, but as I said, the stainless steel butter knife, clean, you know, I just used it and it cleaned off really well. I'll probably pull a little bit out of the, you know, grits of the teeth, but that's why I have that tool. So we'll just close this up. There we go. And basically, um, let me take this and clean off just a little bit off this edge here, just because, you know, for tutorial purposes, but there we go. And then as I said, when it's wet, it's a little bit messier to work with, but basically right already off the bat, like you can already see like the little bits of texture that are right there at the top. You can see like where the bark chip kind of flows down right there. You can see that the two pieces are combined, so it'll make one piece. Here's that third little piece that I added, um, just so that, you know, for the tutorial's sake, there's a little area in there. You could put some grass tufts or like a little rabbit staring out or roots or whatever, um, you know, and you still got plenty of area back here for your sand and anything else. So, I mean, as I said, that's a very basic, basic use for the material, but uh, it works really, really well. Um, I will let this dry and I will, um, and then it'll allow me to basically file where I need it and then I will put down my sand and, you know, that'll really help that. One of the cool things after this is once this uh, base is completely put together, I will take it and zenith prime it and it will, you know, because of all of the different edges and the different depths 
it will pick up the black and the white really well so shadows will, will look really cool on it so um since this one's going to take a little bit to dry i brought another base that i currently finished and was working on now as you can see on this this uh, model this base is um is already primed but using my exacto knife here um, the tree was just a piece of wood but if you look here you can already see this is all bark chip right here and this over here is bark chip this area down here where it's all gritty that's the dried that is the dried um, brown earth paste and I actually put it all over this model here um, here and around here um, just so it would give more texture and I actually if you look at the back of the tree here all of this like dirt right in here that's all the bark uh, that's all the earth paste that I put around it to make it seem more um, uniform and I also got a few bits of uh, super sculpey in here for my ruins like I was talking about so like I cut into the model here and then you can see this piece right here that's actually a piece of super sculpey and I used my exacto knife to cut into the bark chips and place that farther down and I kind of did this little water effect so all, the, all in all you can see with that without it even being painted at all like it has a lot of um, it's very dynamic and using this stuff you can do a lot with your basing so so once again, I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch the video. Hopefully this was able to help you out and, um, you know, show you a new technique or trick that you can use for your basing and hopefully advanced maneuvers helped your models look a little bit better or save a little bit of time. Thanks guys. If you enjoyed this advanced maneuvers hobby content, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And let us know what future tips and tricks and hobby related materials you would like to see. Don't forget, it just takes one brush stroke to keep getting better.